This is Mrs. Palmer Quay with the second video for Module 2. In this video, I want to talk about temperature. Before we get to temperature, I want to start with thermal energy and heat. The thermal energy in an object is based on the internal kinetic energy of all of the molecules in a sample of whatever you're trying to test the temperature of. Remember, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and all of those atoms are moving. They are not standing still. They are moving around inside the substance, even if we can't see it. Objects that are not moving very much would have a smaller amount of kinetic energy than objects that have more motion and more kinetic energy. And so the thermal energy of this T1 sample would, ha would be a lower thermal energy than compared to this sample on the right because it has less kinetic movement going on down on the atomic level. Now we can't measure thermal energy as itself there sitting inside an object, but we can measure it as heat when it moves from one object to the other. So thermal energy is part of the internal energy of an object, and we don't measure that directly. But we can measure heat because if two objects of different thermal energy come in contact, heat moves. And it moves in the direction of hot to cold. So we have our little example down here with two blocks, one of which is hot, this red hot block, and one is cold. If we put those two in contact, so their surfaces are touching here, you see heat will move, and it will move from hot to cold. And if we leave them long enough, they'll reach a point of thermal equilibrium, where the thermal energy level of A is exactly the same as B. Heat is no longer moving from one to the other because the thermal energy is the same. As this heat moves, it can be registered on a thermometer and we can measure it using various temperature scales. So in order for us to measure the temperature, we have to allow time for the object and the thermometer to come to thermal equilibrium. We cannot get an accurate temperature by just tossing the thermometer into a beaker of solution and reading it right away. We have to allow it to sit and reach this point of thermal equilibrium. There are various scales that we use to assign a temperature to an object, and I'll get to that in a minute. But if you can just think about thermal equilibrium, I know you can picture this outdoor thermometer there hanging on the porch, and if you were to touch it, it would feel cold because the outside air is cold, and it has reached a point of thermal equilibrium with the outside air, giving us a reading of about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. There are three different temperature scales that you will be uh, familiar with by the time you're done with this course. The Fahrenheit scale is the one you probably know best already because it's the one that we use as our standard temperature scale here in the United States. We're the only country that's still using the Fahrenheit scale as a standard scale. It was developed by a German scientist by the name of Fahrenheit in 1724. And it uses the, the temperatures of water freezing at 32 degrees and water boiling at 212 degrees. In between those two degrees, you'll see there are 182 separate degrees. The lower fixed point, then again, is water freezing. The upper fixed point is water boiling. Those same two fixed points are used for the Celsius scale, developed in 1744 by a Swedish scientist named Celsius. And this had an old-fashioned name of centigrade back when I was in school. We used this centigrade as well as Celsius. And you can see why, because water is given the lower fixed point of freezing at 0 degrees and an upper point of boiling at 100 degrees. So there are 100 degree units in between the freezing and boiling points on the Celsius scale. So if you compare the size of 1 degree you know, the physical distance from one end to the other of one degree at Celsius to Fahrenheit, the Celsius degrees are a little bit larger. Celsius is the standard scale worldwide among countries. That's the temperature that everybody uses to say how cold or hot it is outside or the temperature of your food. And then we have the Kelvin scale. And this is one that is the 
International Standard Unit of Temperature for Scientists. It was developed in 1848 by a British scientist, and it was based on the idea that we can reach a point of absolute zero, where there, there is no internal movement at all happening in a substance. Remember, we have amount of thermal energy that is comes about because of the amount of internal kinetic energy. And so Lord Kelvin, he was a British lord, proposed that a point could be reached that was so cold that there would not be any movement at all. And it would be, there'd be no thermal energy then, so there would be no temperature. And this is absolute zero. This value was calculated from experiments. It was extrapolated from data. We have not measured anything at absolute zero. In fact, the cold, cold, coldness of the universe is about three degrees above absolute zero. The Kelvin degree size is the same as Celsius, but we don't use the word degree. degree. We just say Kelvin. So zero degrees Celsius is equivalent to 273.15 Kelvin. That means that there are 273.15 degrees between 0 Kelvin and 0 Celsius. Whenever you are converting between the two scales, you need to remember this magic number of 273. It's rare that we actually have to worry about the 0.15. Because Kelvin is based on the idea of absolute 0, it provides no negative numbers, and that's a very handy thing when it comes to formulas. So we will be converting from Celsius to Kelvin often when we have to do formulas. Here's just a little comparison. So if we look at the freezing point of water, which also could be thought of as the melting point of ice, it is 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and 270 degrees Kelvin. So make sure you know what units you're talking about whenever you're taking a temperature reading. Room temperature, we use that a lot in lab. It's about 20 degrees Celsius, 68 or so Fahrenheit, and 293 Kelvin. The boiling point of water, 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit, and 373 Kelvin. The coldest temperature that was ever recorded in Antarctica was a negative 89 degrees Celsius, which is a cold negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit, but it was only 183 Kelvin, because remember, there's no negative numbers. Or there's this little comparison. In our Fahrenheit scale that we're so familiar with, a zero degree temperature is really cold outside, and a hundred degrees temperature is really hot. In the Celsius scale, zero degrees is fairly cold, but not really, really cold because water is just starting to freeze. But at 100 degrees, you would be dead. And in Kelvin, whether it is zero or 100, you're going to be dead because it is so cold that there's no chance of life. You'll become more comfortable with Celsius and Kelvin, I'm sure, as we work with it in lab and in classes. But hopefully this will get you started on your understanding of temperature.